Well, in in Europe, I get I get that a lot where people stop me and ask me for autographs because you know soccer is the biggest sport in in the world really when it comes to uh, globally. Um, so I, I kind of sometimes feel bad when when I have to uh, stop a, an athlete and ask them for a picture or just to say hello. But um, they've been nothing but accommodating and. And they all seem to be very, very humble and respectful, so I appreciate that. So, you know, I've talked to MMA guys, and some of them, there are times they actually like to kind of not be known. Mm -hmm. So when you guys come to the States, does it piss you off? Or, I mean, you're an American, you're from New Jersey, uh, you are world famous, and yet, you know, you can walk around Nashville and maybe not as many people know you. So how how do you guys handle that? Well, as a Kiss 22, I think you want to grow your sport, and I think you want to grow your own personality. And by that, you have to... Um, be recognized and you have to uh, try and put your name out there but then once you get to a certain level it becomes too much and you and you you know you want your uh, anonymity back so um, I think as an athlete it's inevitable that uh, people are going to recognize you and you have to just kind of roll with the punches but having said that um, we're also entitled to our own private time and our own downtime and uh, people have to respect that. So how, how overwhelming does it get? When you're a you know a huge star, you mentioned you live in Liverpool now, but you played for Man U. So, how overwhelming does it get as an international soccer star? I think it's hard. I think it's hard at first because you're not you're not used to it. You know, uh, back when I played in the states, as you said, didn't get recognized nearly as much or at all, so it wasn't a problem. Whereas now, you go out with your kids, or you go to the mall, you go have dinner, um, and people interrupt uh, those times. And I think you just learn to live with it. It becomes part of life, and uh, you have to handle it in a certain way. But, uh, again, as I said, people have to try and be respectful of, of you as well. Do we have anything here that compares? Uh, probably. I mean, I'm sure, you know, NBA stars are... Yeah. Um, they, kind, they kind of stick out a little bit, too, because of the height. Yeah, so right, right, not right. as easy to hide. I, so I would think so. But I think it's hard to understand the impact that soccer has in other countries because uh, that is their NBA. That is their, you know, the, the best of the best for them. Well, just so you know, you, when you met Forrest Griffin, after you walked away, I was like, do you know who that is? He's like, no idea. I'm like, he's the keeper for the U.S. soccer team. Come on, bro. The guy played for Man U. He's a huge star. N- no clue. That's cool, man. I, I, I have no problem with that. So we were just mentioning a little earlier about soccer players and being physical. Mm-hmm. So what's the, what's the most physical position? And is there, is there a guy or two who have reputations internationally who, uh, you know, you get in a scrap with them, maybe, you know what, on the pitch or off, yeah. that it could get yeah. pretty nasty? Well, I think so. I think probably uh, you're looking at your stronger, tougher guys are going to be your defenders, you know. And uh, I played with a guy at Manchester United, Roy Keane, who, uh, for me, was the toughest and baddest dude around, you know, on the field and off the field. Yeah. Um, and he had a reputation for that. So uh, you didn't want to get in his way. You didn't want to piss him off. And, uh, you know, I think he could hold his own in, in, in quite a few arenas. Yeah, fans walk up to players and start trying to start trouble because they they generally don't do that with mma guys they they, they i would advise you don't do that uh, not that all will go off on you because most of them are professional but uh there's a couple out there we have a couple of vegas guys uh one is a guy named john copenhaver who uh i wouldn't mess with but uh, are there are there fans who actually get that crazy and rabid that they'll walk up to somebody and start picking on them i think i think sometimes you do you get you get people who who don't have a realistic sense of who you are and what you do you know and they just see you as a um, as an object that they, you know from, for their team, and so yeah, sometimes you're going to get the odd fan to, that's going to be stupid. But as you said, when it, when it comes to uh, UFC and MMA, uh, I don't think people make that mistake. You know, I certainly would. Yeah, and do you actually watch the stuff or not? Do you get a chance over there? Well, it's cool because when we get it in um, in England, it's already paid for. We get it on Satanta Television in England. Um, so when the fight comes on live, it's already on our, our normal cable package, so we don't actually have to pay for it. When I come back in, home in the States, yeah, we always, we always order it, and yeah. my family gets together yeah, and watches it. You should go to an event over there. Uh, I, I'm going to try. Obviously, my, my schedule doesn't always mix, but uh, I'm certainly going to try. The last one was, on a, I think, on a Sunday or something, O2 Arena or Saturday night, and I had a game. So. All right. Well, this guy's pretty polished. For folks out there who don't know my background, I, I'm from New Jersey, just like Tim is, and I'm from down in Middletown. He's from North Brunswick, so we're both Central Jersey, and I actually, I'm getting old. Because I covered, you're getting old too, though. I was just thinking, I'm like, that was a long time ago. I actually covered this. He was a pretty good high school basketball player. Did I don't remember? Did we put you on uh, the local paper? Did we have it like second or third team? I don't think you were first team all area. I was first team, but I was, I was up there somewhere. There you go. Yeah. And you were pretty good. You were a pretty solid player in high school. A little, little different level though, getting to that's, the uh, collegiate level. That's right, just a little bit, yeah. And uh, we were talking earlier. You actually uh, you got to go against Jason Williams yeah. from Duke, who kind of flamed out in the NBA because of injuries. But uh, New Jersey's a pretty good state for high school New basketball. Jersey. It's pretty outrageous, actually. Who was the best guy you ever faced? Do you remember? It was probably Jason Williams at the time. You know, he was going to Duke, and he was he was a he was a, he was a huge name. But we got loads of good players coming out of New Jersey all the time. All right, there you go, Tim Howard.